I'm going to talk about Open Map Tiles and Planet Tiler, a way for you guys to create your own web server with tiles, vector tiles. I mean, I know data processing is an exciting topic for very few people, but <laughs> you know, I'm with you. <laughs> but uh, how many of you have actually heard of Open Map Tiles? Okay, so most of you, excellent, excellent. So this project has been around for quite a bit, and uh, I was there partially participating from the beginning, but most of the credit really goes to MapTiler and the company that really brought it to stable, successful form. So what is open tile? Wait, hold on, let me just adjust the screen a little bit because otherwise I cannot see it. Okay, what is open map tiles? It's an open source community project. It is op oh, it's still owned by MapTiler, so it doesn't have like a proper governing structure or technical merit to voting, technical committees, any of that stuff. It's just purely owned and handled by MapTiler, but it is open source and it's very open to every to all sorts of contributions. Um, most of it is based on Impossum. And postures. So let's go one time. Um, it's all about converting all that OpenStreetMap data, that giant 65 gigabytes of protobuf uh, dump of OpenStreetMap to vector tiles, to an MB tiles file that contains the vector tiles. Um, very successful, as I said before. Um, has a lot of forks, a lot of contributions. Mostly focuses on general layers. So the most of the layers are there for the most common use cases of the maps. You know, just get your regular streets, street names, some points of interest in a more generalized way. It doesn't try to cover every corner case. It doesn't try to uh, address every topic. It kind of leaves the individual layers to the users who want to add their own specific data to it. Current, uh, resulting gener uh, currently, it generates about 90 gigs MB tiles, zoom 0 through 14, just like most other systems of that sort. Um, it is used by a lot of companies. I mean, you can see some of the trends. It is used by Elastic, from which, for which I work. And uh, I have contributed quite a bit of open map tiles, mostly in the tooling department. Um, but I did try to do it in SQL. This is how Elastic uses it. I mean, those maps, the map you see on the right, uh, it's all the base map is generated by open map tiles infrastructure. Not infrastructure, sorry, in open map tiles code running on Elastic infrastructure. Um, this is a fun. A little, well, fun is not the right word here because this was a, uh, a volcano, a volcan a volcanic eruption. But uh, this gives you a good um, representation of what Elastic Search can do with the data on top of a map like this. This is another one where OpenStreetMap data got ingested into Elastic again, showing on, on top of the Open Map Tiles generated data. So, how to start with Open Map Tiles? It's actually very straightforward. There's a bunch of make targets that you just run one after another, or you just run a quick start. You say quick start, give it a name of an area. In five to 10 minutes, you will have that area generated. Fini. Nothing too exciting, nothing too complex. It just works. But most of the genera uh, genera generation magic is done by Postgres Postgres SQL plus PostGIS. Thanks to a lot of great work done. I'm not even sure who contributed. Possibly Mapbox and many other developers contributed a lot of MVT work. Uh, so PostGIS, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, became very capable with ST as MVT. Uh, so you can move all the tile generation completely into Postgres and just say, do the work, give me a zipped gzipped uh, MVT tile and I'll just serve it to the users. You don't need to do anything after Postgres is done with the query. And that's actually how Open Map Tile now is using it. There's a lot of code there and this is not all the code. This is just like a tiny fraction of the Open Map Tile's code combined into one gig ginormous 
it's a word, um, statement that generates all the all of the MVT in one go. So you say, give me MVT, and for that, give me all the layers as MVTs, because MVTs, you can just combine them one after another, and it just works magically. Um, and that's how the system works, because you have one ma magic function, get MVT, that just does all of this. If you look at one specific layer, it kind of looks like this. So you have uh, the geometry processing portion, where you convert the from uh, Postgres stored geometry into MVT geometry, and you uh, combine it with some attributes, and you're done. There's some interesting, uh, I'm going to go a little faster, because surprisingly, all of this will become somewhat irrelevant in two seconds, but you we'll just wait for it. Um, there was a lot of fun changes to uh, late, latest release of open metals. It supports now building, class, um, combining of buildings into city blocks, which is something very useful. Like as you can see in the animation on the upper right corner, uh, you know, uh, city, uh, when you look at Zoom 13 and you look at the city block, individual buildings become too small to be noticed, so they get re out of, removed. But then when you zoom out, when you look at the city, this, I mean, you expect the buildings to become one blob and without the joining. Uh, and this is a very expensive operation. I mean, great, greatly increased the processing time. There's some pl planned changes for the future, uh, mostly attribute cleanup, so possibly switching to Zoom 15. Community is very active, tons of contributions, uh, some of some of them, uh, for example, Brian, I think is oh there he is, uh, is right there. Um, I don't think anyone else actually made it to this conference, but community is active and really developing it for it. But and here comes the fun part. <laughs> this wonderful individual that we all would love to hate, but we love him because he really showed us the way. Let's call him Messiah. Uh, sorry, Michael Berry decided to take a stab at this open map tiles infrastructure. And he goes, well, how come it's all being done with Postgres and lots of like tables and normalization, uh, sorry, uh, simplification of the tables and uh, um, what do you call Oof, it's escapes me. The materialized views of uh, and uh, with all sorts of additional work and the result is that open map tiles, I know, at least for me, for an elastic would take about three days on three machines, each being 64 cores with lots and lots of RAM to generate the world. Kind of expensive. So he changed it inside and out. He boosted the performance 230 or 250, like the number is still kind of up for debate, times. So or over two orders of magnitude improvement in tile generation with one tiny little program written in Java that just could do all of this, essentially on a laptop, on a beefy laptop, preferably on a, on a single server with a lot of um, hardware. Um, so as I said, written in Java, Dockerized, Apache 2 license, uh, so needs some hardware, has hard-coded schema currently, uh, so it's all Java code basically. There's no configuration files or anything like that. It's that it's still a to-do, uh, and the uh, the big to-do, as I said, so need some declarative slash scriptable way to generate to configure it and support real-time updates, which is another big one, which might not really be needed that much because if you can generate the whole planet in one hour. <laughs> Unless you're running OSM server itself and you want one minute updates, you really don't want it. But I would really love for this system to be used for Open uh, OpenStreetMap itself. So I'm still going to experiment with real-time update system. How does it work? This is the magic. Okay, so this is the secret sauce, patented and everything. Um, when you process geometries from OpenStreetMap data, Imagine you just take one geometry, one feature, you slice it and dice it, I mean, X and Y. Um, that's a technical term, right? Yeah. And you put these slices, as, as I call them, slices, into separate files. 
Like you just generate this, so each thread just dumps whatever slices it creates for each um, for each geometry into one file. Another thread puts it in a different file, whatever. And then each of these files essentially have like a slice of the geometry for one tile and a bunch of attributes for that same for that geometry and some other index information. And then what he does is he takes all of these files and sorts each one of them by that key. And that's the, then does a merge sort of all these chunks into a single MB tiles file. And voila, because when you merge sort, you essentially combine these slices with the same ID, ID being X, Y, and Z coordinates into uh, MVT. That's, I mean, you end up with MVT by, by just uh, adding these tile, uh, this, uh, these individual slices together. Uh, this is the more in general version of the of what I've just described. So the the left side is all about parsing pro, uh, protobuf OSM data, multi-passed because you have to resolve nodes and all that stuff. And I would love to get rid of that too, eventually someday, hopefully, so that we don't have to resolve nodes at least. Um, then it does the slicing. The writer writes to the chunks. The chunks get sorted, encoding, gzipping, you're done. It's as simple as that. Well, I'm really surprised no one thought of this kind of pipelining before. But this is the beauty of open source and uh, people iteratively improving the design. Uh, these are some fun statistics on the upper right corner. Um, this is what it is currently can do. Wait until we get we switch to Rust or something. Um, so basically, one hour in with 128 gigabytes and 64 CPUs, or about three hours on a laptop if you have that much RAM. Um, get involved. How is one it? Java devs, please jump in. Let's uh, let's get it to the point where we know how to use the configuration slash scriptable system and figure out uh, this uh, the way to uh, make it configurable to each each person's, each uh, user's requirements. Uh, Rust developers, this is my personal call. Let's try to see if it's if it makes sense to have this kind of data processing pipeline um, it, written in Rust. Questions? Let's give a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.